Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've got a couple things to do today, including planting up a couple of my cabbage seedlings. And in addition to that, I'm going to show you all the fall uh, seedlings that I planted last week. Um, not only that, I'm going to show you what I'm doing to make it as pest free as possible. So stay tuned and uh, let's get started. So I've only got a couple more of these cabbage seedlings left and uh, these are megaton cabbage and they're supposed to grow really big. So it's, isn't it funny how these little sprouts are going to grow really big into huge cabbages one day. So I've already got a couple planted right here, those two right there, and I've spaced them pretty far apart. I would say that's about maybe 18 to 20 inches apart or so. These two that are left, I'm going to go and plant them over here into this empty spot. So first off, as you can see that I have a drip line going through here and a couple of the drippers are here, here and there. So I'm going to try to space the cabbages to where they'll get each an even amount of water. But let's go and take these cabbage seedlings out of their cell. Also, if you use a regular marker for labeling, as you can see here, it's going to fade away. So I do have some UV resistant uh, markers for labeling my plant name tags and such but thankfully I have my videos that I can refer back to now to see what I planted anyways now that that's loosened up I'm just gonna gently slide them out there you go and I'm just gonna gently tease these apart just like that And such beautiful soil. I'm so proud of myself for this soil, you guys. Trust me, it did not look like this when I started. So you guys, I love planting brassicas and cabbages, cauliflowers, things like that. But the number one problem that I have with them usually is the pest damage. This season, I've had to deal with a lot of different kind of pests, including roly polies, aphids, flea beetles, and even squirrels. So I need to make a solution. Now, as a disclaimer, these are all fall plants and they're gonna overwinter and things like that. So I'm not gonna run into as much pest damage as I usually will and that's one of the things that I love about fall planting and winter gardening. However, let me show you the tips and tricks that I'm going to do today that will prevent um, any kind of damage from these bugs and whatnot because I know it's part of growing your own food. You're going to deal with bugs and things like that but the less aphids and the less bugs that I see on my vegetables the better. So why not do my best to prevent this problem in the first place and just have beautiful looking greens and plants. So before we get to that, first I'm gonna show you everything that I've planted out so far in my fall garden. So I've planted out everything in this one bed. And the reason for doing that is simple. I just wanna manage one bed during the winter. I'm gonna be turning off the irrigation to my other raised bed so I can just hand water this and it won't be too hard or anything and everything will be in the same spot. Here I've got the Swiss chard and some of the onions. A lot of them are looking a little floppy and that's to be expected. 
while they're doing that they're pretty much putting out new roots and then eventually you'll get good new green growth now these guys are just doing fantastic they're just ready to go look at that beautiful leaf usually by this time if you're planting things for the summer the roly-polies will have gotten to them or the aphids will have infested or you'll have a squirrel that comes through and just levels everything off at least in my garden that is now planting the onions in between the plants is definitely going to help reduce some of the pest pressure roly-polies aren't deterred or care about onions so the problem that i've had with roly-polies is as soon as i would plant something or direct sow into the ground they would chop it right off at the head and yes roly-polies do in fact eat seedlings i've seen it with my own very eyes so uh, once the plant is more established they usually don't bother it but once they see that fresh nutritious green sprout coming out of the seed they'll take it right away I've tried several different ways to get rid of the problem or at least mitigate it but this is the only thing that's worked this is a product called sluggo plus and it's for slugs earwigs snails as well as roly polies now normally roly polies help the garden and they can decompose a lot of the old material and add fertilizer to your garden but once they're infested like they were in my garden you have to do something to mitigate the problem Part of the reason why a lot of my plants got out so late is because every time I would direct sow, the roly-polies would come out and just ravage things and level it off, and I'd have to start all over again. So this time I know exactly how to treat them. And what is a roly-poly? Well, there's one right there. There are these little sow bugs or potato bugs, whatever you want to call them, and when they're disturbed, they'll turn into a little ball, and that's why they're called roly-polies. Here's one right here. You know, it turns into a ball. To apply, it's best that you water your plants first so that the soil is kind of moist. Then you just take a sprinkle of the stuff and sprinkle it around your seedlings. So what this does is it's more attractive to them to eat this than my plants and it'll basically kill them. The thing I've read about roly-polies is once they smell another dead member, they really don't like coming around to that same place. So it doubles in the benefit. And this has definitely worked. Every now and then I'll have to reapply just a little bit, especially if it rains or if I do a heavy watering. But for the most part, it's worked really well. And by the time I need to reapply, my seedlings are strong anyway, and the roly-polies are no longer bothering them. As far as aphid control goes, I have another separate video on that. Uh, just a few applications of neem oil or just letting nature take its course. Aphids don't really do a bunch of damage, but um, if they do, go watch my other video and you'll know exactly how to take care of those. Now as far as flea beetles are concerned, uh, they're these little tiny little beetles that jump around just like little fleas and they'll attack your brassicas, they'll attack eggplants, but what will happen is you'll notice that the leaves of your plants look like there's little bullet holes through them all throughout and they'll get really lacy and just really bad looking. This summer all of my broccoli, all of my cauliflower, all my cabbages were ravaged by the flea beetles until I took care of it. And I'm so surprised that my broccoli bounced right back. Look at this. I had almost given up on these plants and I was about to just pull them out because the damage was so bad. So the solution for the flea beetles after a lot of experimentation was really simple. So I use this green colored bowl because one time I left out a green tarp for whatever reason and I saw them jumping into it. So with this bowl, I basically fill it up with just regular water mixed in with some Dawn dish soap, the Dawn blue dish soap, and uh, some of them were jumping right in. So what I would do is I would place this bowl right underneath the brassica leaves just like that. And of course, you know, it would be filled with soapy water in there. And some of them would jump right in, or I'd give the plants a good shake or a spray with my watering hose. And they would all just fall in there and get trapped in the soapy water bubbles and it would kill them instantly. So that still didn't kill them all. I still had to come through and spray with my neem oil solution, which also seemed to do the trick. So the combination of those two methods finally got rid of my flea beetle problem. And I was having the same problem with this potato plant of mine that I've been growing. If you want to see how I grew this potato plant, check out one of the shorts on my channel. I'll leave a link down below. But as you can see, it's recovered with the methods that I'm talking to you guys about today. Okay, so we talked about aphids, we talked about roly-polies, we talked about flea beetles. So what about the squirrel? Obviously a neem oil spray and those granules aren't going to work against squirrels. 
Well, I mean, I could just remove the squirrel and relocate it, but chances are that squirrel is coming back or another squirrel is going to take its place as long as I have these delicious, yummy vegetables in my garden. The solution to that, right here. So this is netting fabric, and you'll see a lot of netting just placed all around my garden, like even right here. And this is by far the best protection that you can get from pests. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy, you guys. This fabric right here is just from Walmart. It's just regular tool that you can find really cheap. You can also find it on Amazon for pretty cheap in rolls, and you just drape it over the plants. And by far, the netting fabric has been the best solution to pests here in my garden. Find kits like this on Amazon to help you with the process. Disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video, but the kit comes with rods like this. As well as little landscape staples to put them in. Connectors that I've just dropped everywhere. And also some clips to just hold everything together. And I've got an example right here, right behind me on how I've used this kit. This kit's only like $20 or so, 20 something dollars. So it's definitely worth it. And let me just show you how it works. So basically right here, as you can see, after you assemble the rods, it makes a little nice little arch. It gives you a nice little support and you just connect the rods together. And after you just put them in the ground, you just put these clips on to hold the netting in place. Now I have that black tool netting here, super cheap. You can find that anywhere really. And I like that because it looks pretty transparent. Now here I have some radishes growing and normally after I plant these, you would see if I'm lucky, maybe half as many just because the roly polies would get them right away or the aphids would or the flea beetles would, or even if they grow to this size, our squirrel would come through and just take care of them all by himself. So this netting has served its purpose here and look how healthy these daikon radish are looking. And I've got some lettuce growing here in the front as well. Some more radishes sprouting over here. I planted these with some more radish seed tape and I planted some spinach on this side as well. The physical barrier is definitely the best barrier and protection for pests. Now the only thing is if you're planting in the summertime and you're planting plants like peppers and whatnot that, that'll need pollinated, you'll just wanna come by and get rid of the netting for the daytime so that the pollinators can get to your flowers and do what they need to do. The only things that I'm planting in my fall garden raised bed, they're just leafy greens and brassicas. So I've already assembled my netting system right here and I'm just gonna put it on my plants. So that's basically it you guys, it's as easy as that. I will be going back in and reinforcing it just a little bit, driving down those arches a little bit deeper. And then of course I'll uh, tidy up this extra netting fabric and make sure to anchor it down with those landscape staples. I also don't know how sturdy this stuff is, only time will tell, but uh, it'll do for now and I'm just excited to have some clean leafy green vegetables and brassicas without having to worry about bugs and the pest problem. So that's it for today's video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was informative and educational and helpful. If it was, please let me know in the comments down below. Also like if you enjoyed the video, share it with your friends, and please don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the things that I've got going on in my little garden here. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one.